War of the Second Coalition The War of the Second Coalition, 1798-1802, was the second war on revolutionary France by most of the European monarchies, led by Britain, Austria, and Russia, and including the Ottoman Empire, Portugal, Naples, and various German monarchies, though Prussia did not join this coalition, and Spain and Denmark supported France. Prologue, Marengo, province of Mantua. In August 1798, the Battle of the Nile took place. Nelson wiped out the French fleet while it was at anchor in the shallows. 38,000 French soldiers were stranded. The French defeat allowed the formation of a second coalition by restoring European confidence in Britain. Europe decided to attack France while she was weakened. A three-pronged attack was planned on France by Britain, Austria, and Russia. Britain would attack through Holland. Austria would attack through Italy. Russian would attack France through Switzerland. Second coalition begins Rome, Italy. The coalition first began to come together on 19 May 1798 when Austria and the Kingdom of Naples signed an alliance in Vienna. The first military action under the alliance occurred on 29 November when Austrian General Karl Mack occupied Rome and restored papal authority with a Neapolitan army. By 1 December, the Kingdom of Naples had signed alliances with both Russia and Great Britain, and by 2 January 1799, additional alliances were in place between Russia, Great Britain, and the Ottoman Empire. French Campaign in Egypt and Syria Cairo, Egypt The French Campaign in Egypt and Syria, 1798-1801, was Napoleon Bonaparte's campaign in the Ottoman territories of Egypt and Syria, proclaimed to defend French trade interests to establish scientific enterprise in the region and ultimately to join the forces of Indian ruler Tipu Sultan and drive away the British from the Indian subcontinent. It was the primary purpose of the Mediterranean Campaign of 1798, a series of naval engagements that included the capture of Malta. The campaign ended in defeat for Napoleon and the withdrawal of French troops from the region. Russians Malta in 1798, Paul Theron gave General Korsakov command of an expeditionary force of 30,000 men sent to Germany to join Austria in the fight against the French Republic. At the beginning of 1799, the force was diverted to drive the French out of Switzerland. In September 1798, with the consent of the Turkish government, a Russian fleet entered the Mediterranean, where the Emperor Paul, appointing himself protector of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, intended to liberate Malta from the French. Admiral Fyodor Ushakov was sent to the Mediterranean in command of a joint Russian-Turkish squadron to support General Alexander Suvorov's upcoming Italian and Swiss expedition, 1799-1800. One of Ushakov's main tasks was to take the strategically important Ionian Islands from the French. In October 1798, the French garrisons were driven from Scythera, Zakynthos, Cephalonia, and Lefkada. It remained to take the largest and best fortified island of the archipelago, Corfu. Russia signed an alliance with Turkey on January 3, 1799. Corfu capitulated on March 3, 1799. Battle of Ostrak Ostrak, Germany. It was the first non-Italy-based battle of the War of the Second Coalition. The battle resulted in the victory of the Austrian forces under the command of Archduke Charles over the French forces, commanded by Jean-Baptiste Jourdan. Although casualties appeared even on both sides, the Austrians had a significantly larger fighting force, both on the field at Ostrak and stretched along a line between Lake Constance and Ulm. French casualties amounted to 8% of the force and Austrian approximately 4%. The French withdrew to Engen and Stockach, where a few days later, the armies engaged again at the Battle of Stockach. Battle of Stockach, Stockach, Germany. The Battle of Stockach occurred on 25 March 1799 when French and Austrian armies fought for control of the geographically strategic Hegau region in present day Baden Wurttemberg. In the broader military context, this battle constitutes a keystone in the first campaign in southwestern Germany during the wars of the Second Coalition, Battle of Verona, Verona, Italy. Battle of Verona on 26 March 1799 saw a Habsburg-Austrian army under Paul Cray, 
fight a first French Republic army led by Barthélemy Louis-Joseph Scherer. The battle encompassed three separate combats on the same day. At Verona, the two sides battled to a bloody draw. At Pastrengo to the west of Verona, French forces prevailed over their Austrian opponents. At Lignago to the southeast of Verona, the Austrians defeated their French adversaries. Battle of Magnano Buda Pietra, VR Italy. In the Battle of Magnano on 5 April 1799, an Austrian army commanded by Paul Cray was a clear-cut victory by Cray over the French, with the Austrians sustaining 6,000 casualties while inflicting losses of 8,000 men and 18 guns on their foes. The defeat was a crushing blow to French morale and prompted Scherer to plead with the French directory to be relieved of command. Battle of Winterthur Winterthur, Switzerland The Battle of Winterthur, 27 May 1799, was an important action between elements of the Army of the Danube and elements of the Habsburg Army, commanded by Friedrich Freiherr von Hotze during the War of the Second Coalition, part of the French Revolutionary Wars. The small town of Winterthur lies 18 kilometers, 11 Mofferen, northeast of Zurich in Switzerland. Because of its position at the junction of seven roads, the army that held the town controlled access to most of Switzerland and points crossing the Rhine into southern Germany. Although the forces involved were small, the ability of the Austrians to sustain their 11-hour assault on the French line resulted in the consolidation of three Austrian forces on the plateau north of Zurich, leading to the French defeat a few days later. First Battle of Zurich, Zurich, Switzerland. In March, Massena's army occupied Switzerland, preparing an attack against Tyrol through Vorarlberg. However, the defeats of French armies in Germany and Italy forced him to return to the defensive. Taking over Jordan's army, he pulled it back into Switzerland to Zurich. Archduke Charles pursued him and drove him back west at the First Battle of Zurich. The French general André Massena was forced to yield the city to the Austrians under Archduke Charles and retreat beyond the limit where he managed to fortify his positions, resulting in a stalemate. During the summer, Russian troops under General Korsakov replaced the Austrian troops. Battle of Trebia. Trebia, Italy. The Battle of Trebia was fought between the joint Russian and Habsburg army under Alexander Suvorov and the Republican French army of Jacques MacDonald. Though the opposing armies were approximately equal in numbers, the Austro-Russians severely defeated the French sustaining about 6,000 casualties while inflicting losses of 12,000 to 6,500 on their enemies. Italian and Swiss Expedition Switzerland The Italian and Swiss expeditions of 1799 and 1800 were undertaken by a combined Austro-Russian army under overall command of the Russian general Alexander Suvorov against French forces in Piedmont, Lombardy and Switzerland as part of the Italian campaigns of the French Revolutionary Wars in general and the War of the Second Coalition in particular. Battle of Cassano Cassano Dada, Italy The Battle of Cassano Dada was fought on 27 April 1799 near Cassano Dada, about 28 Yolwenors, 17 Nimait, Ni of Milan. It resulted in a victory for the Austrians and Russians under Alexander Suvorov over Jean Moreau's French army. Battle of Novi, Novi Ligure, Italy The Battle of Novi, 15th of August 1799, saw a combined army of the Habsburg monarchy and Imperial Russians under Field Marshal Alexander Suvorov attack a Republican French army under General Barthélemy Catherine Joubert. After a prolonged and bloody struggle, the Austro-Russians broke through the French defenses and drove their enemies into a disorderly retreat. Anglo-Russian Invasion of Holland North Holland the Anglo-Russian invasion of Holland was a military campaign during the War of the Second Coalition in which an expeditionary force of British and Russian troops invaded the North Holland Peninsula in the Batavian Republic. The campaign had two strategic objectives, to neutralize the Batavian fleet and to promote an uprising by followers of the former stadtholder William V against the Batavian government. The invasion was opposed by a slightly smaller joint Franco-Batavian army Tactically, the Anglo-Russian forces were successful initially, defeating the defenders in the battles of Kalansug and the Kravendam, 
but subsequent battles went against the Anglo-Russian forces. Second Battle of Zurich Zurich, Switzerland When Charles left Switzerland for the Netherlands, the Allies were left with a smaller army under Korsakov, who was ordered to unite with Suvorov's army from Italy. Masena attacked Korsakov, crushing him at the Second Battle of Zurich. Suvorov, with a force of 18,000 Russian regulars and 5,000 Cossacks, exhausted and short of provisions, led a strategic withdrawal from the Alps while fighting off the French. Allied failures, as well as British insistence on searching shipping in the Baltic Sea, led to Russia withdrawing from the Second Coalition. Emperor Paul recalled the Russian armies from Europe. Battle of Castricum Castricum, Netherlands. An Anglo-Russian force of 32,000 men landed in North Holland on August 27, 1799, captured the Dutch fleet at Den Helder on August 30th, and the city of Alkmaar on October 3rd. Following a series of battles at Bergen on September 19th and Alkmaar on October 2nd, also known as Second Bergen, they faced the French and Dutch armies at Castricum on October 6th. Following a defeat at Castricum, the Duke of York, the British Supreme Commander, decided upon a strategic retreat to the original bridgehead in the extreme north of the peninsula. Subsequently, an agreement was negotiated with the Supreme Commander of the Franco-Batavian Forces, General Guillaume Marie Ann Brune, that allowed the Anglo-Russian forces to evacuate this bridgehead unmolested. However, the expedition partly succeeded in its first objective, capturing a significant proportion of the Batavian fleet. Coup of 18 Brumaire, Paris, France. The Coup of 18 Brumaire brought General Napoleon Bonaparte to power as first consul of France, and in the view of most historians ended the French Revolution. This bloodless coup d'etat overthrew the directory, replacing it with the French consulate. Siege of Genoa, Genoa, Italy. During the siege of Genoa, the Austrians besieged and captured Genoa. However, the smaller French force at Genoa under André Massena had diverted enough Austrian troops to enable Napoleon to win the Battle of Marengo and defeat the Austrians. Battle of Marengo, Spinetta, Marengo, Italy. The Battle of Marengo was fought on 14th of June, 1800 between French forces under the First Consul Napoleon Bonaparte and Austrian forces near the city of Alessandria in Piedmont, Italy. Near the end of the day, the French overcame General Michael von Mellis's surprise attack, driving the Austrians out of Italy and consolidating Napoleon's political position in Paris as First Consul of France in the wake of his coup d'etat the previous November. Battle of Hohenlinden, Hohenlinden, Germany. The Battle of Hohenlinden was fought on 3rd of December 1800 during the French Revolutionary Wars. A French army under Jean-Victor Marie Moreau won a decisive victory over the Austrians and Bavarians led by Archduke John of Austria. After being forced into a disastrous retreat, the Allies were compelled to request an armistice that effectively ended the War of the Second Coalition. Battle of Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Denmark The Battle of Copenhagen of 1801 was a naval battle in which a British fleet fought and defeated a smaller force of the Dano-Norwegian Navy anchored near Copenhagen on 2nd April 1801. The battle came about over British fears that the powerful Danish fleet would ally with France and a breakdown in diplomatic communications on both sides. The Royal Navy won a resounding victory besting 15 Danish warships while losing none in return. Epilogue Marengo, Italy The Treaty of Amiens temporarily ended hostilities between France and the United Kingdom at the end of the War of the Second Coalition. It marked the end of the French Revolutionary Wars. Key Findings Under the treaty, Britain recognized the French Republic. Together with the Treaty of Lunéville, 1801, the Treaty of Amiens marked the end of the Second Coalition, which had waged war against revolutionary France since 1798. Britain gave up most of its recent conquests. France was to evacuate Naples and Egypt. Britain retained Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and Trinidad. The territories left of the Rhine are part of France. 
daughter republics in the Netherlands, Northern Italy, and Switzerland. The Holy Roman Empire is obliged to compensate the German princes for the lost territories left of the Rhine. The treaty is generally considered to be the most appropriate point to mark the transition between the French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars, although Napoleon was not crowned emperor until 1804. The consequences of the Second Coalition had proved fatal to the Directory. Blamed for the resumption of hostilities in Europe, it was compromised by its defeats in the field and by the measures required to repair them. Conditions were now ripe for the military dictatorship of Napoleon Bonaparte, who landed at Fréjus on October 9th. A month later, he seized power by the coup of 18-19 Brumaire Year the 8th, November 9th to 10th, 1799, to make himself first consul. War of the Third Coalition The War of the Third Coalition was a European conflict spanning the years 1803 to 1806. During the war, France and its client states under Napoleon I defeated an alliance, the Third Coalition, made up of the United Kingdom, the Holy Roman Empire, the Russian Empire, Naples, Sicily, and Sweden. Prussia remained neutral during the war. Prologue Austerlitz In March 1802, France and Britain agreed to cease hostilities under the Treaty of Amiens. For the first time in 10 years, all of Europe was at peace. However, many problems persisted between the two sides, making the implementation of the treaty increasingly difficult. Bonaparte was angry that British troops had not evacuated the island of Malta. The tension only worsened when Bonaparte sent an expeditionary force to re-establish control over Haiti. Prolonged intransigence on these issues led Britain to declare war on France on 18 May 1803, despite the fact that Bonaparte finally accepted the occupation of Malta by the British. The nascent Third Coalition came into being in December 1804, when in exchange for payment, an Anglo-Swedish agreement was signed, allowing the British to use Swedish Pomerania as a military base against France. Planned Invasion of the United Kingdom English Channel Napoleon's planned invasion of the United Kingdom at the start of the War of the Third Coalition, although never carried out, was a major influence on British naval strategy and the fortification of the coast of Southeast England. French attempts to invade Ireland in order to destabilize the United Kingdom or as a stepping stone to Great Britain had already occurred in 1796. From 1803 to 1805, a new army of 200,000 men, known as the Armée de Côte de l'Océan, was gathered and trained at camps at Boulogne, Bruges, and Montreuil. A large national flotilla of invasion barges was built in channel ports along the coasts of France and the Netherlands, right from Etaples to Flushing, and gathered at Boulogne. These preparations were financed by the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, whereby France ceded her huge North American territories to the United States in return for a payment of 50 million French francs, $11,250,000. The entire amount was spent on the projected invasion. Blockade of Saint-Domingue, Haiti with Napoleon's inability to send the requested massive reinforcements after the outbreak of war on 18th of May, 1803 with the British, the Royal Navy immediately dispatched a squadron under Sir John Duckworth from Jamaica to cruise in the region, seeking to eliminate communication between the French outposts and to capture or destroy the French warships based in the colony. The blockade of Saint-Domingue not only cut the French forces out from reinforcements and supplies from France, but also meant that the British began to supply arms to the Haitians. Grande Armée France The Grande Armée was formed in 1804 from the L'Armée des Côtes de l'Océan, Army of the Ocean Coasts, a force of over 100,000 men that Napoleon had assembled for the proposed invasion of Britain. Napoleon later deployed the army in Eastern Europe to eliminate the combined threat of Austria and Russia, which were part of the Third Coalition assembled against France. Thereafter, the name Grande Armée was used for the principal French army deployed in the campaigns of 1805 and 1807, where it earned its prestige, and in 1812, 1813-14, and 1815. In practice, however, the term Grande Armée is used in English to refer to all the multinational forces gathered by Napoleon in his campaigns. 
Upon its formation, the Grande Armée consisted of six corps under the command of Napoleon's marshals and senior generals. When the Austrian and Russian armies began preparations to invade France in late 1805, the Grande Armée was quickly ordered across the Rhine into southern Germany, leading to Napoleon's victories at Ulm and Austerlitz. The French army grew as Napoleon seized power across Europe, recruiting troops from occupied and allied nations. It reached its peak of one million men at the start of the Russian campaign in 1812, with the Grande Armée reaching its height of 413,000 French soldiers who would take part in the invasion, with the total invasion force exceeding 600,000 men when including foreign recruits. In addition to its size and multinational composition, the Grande Armée was known for its innovative formations, tactics, logistics, and communications. Unlike most armed forces at the time, it operated on a strictly meritocratic basis. While most contingents were commanded by French generals, except for the Polish and Austrian corps, most soldiers could climb the ranks regardless of class, wealth, or national origin. Execution of Duke of Enghien, Chateau de Vincennes, Paris. F of French dragoons crossed the Rhine secretly, surrounded his house and brought him to Strasbourg, 15th of March, 1804, and thence to the Chateau de Vincennes, near Paris, where a military commission of French colonels presided over by General Hulin was hastily convened to try him. The Duke was charged chiefly with bearing arms against France in the late war, and with intending to take part in the new coalition then proposed against France. The military commission presided over by Hulin drew up the act of condemnation, being incited thereto by orders from Anne Jean-Marie René Savary, who had come charged with instructions to kill the Duke. Savary prevented any chance of an interview between the condemned and the First Consul, and on 21st March, the Duke was shot in the moat of the castle, near a grave which had already been prepared. A platoon of the gendarme d'élite was in charge of the execution. Enghien's execution infuriated royal courts throughout Europe, becoming one of the contributing political factors for the outbreak of the War of the Third Coalition. Emperor of the French Notre Dame de Paris During the consulate, Napoleon faced several royalist and Jacobin assassination plots, including the Conspiration des Poignards, Dagger Plot, in October 1800, and the plot of the Rue saint Niquet's two months later. In January 1804, his police uncovered an assassination plot against him that involved Moreau, and which was ostensibly sponsored by the Bourbon family, the former rulers of France. On the advice of Talleyrand, Napoleon ordered the kidnapping of the Duke of Enghien, violating the sovereignty of Baden. The Duke was quickly executed after a secret military trial. To expand his power, Napoleon used these assassination plots to justify the creation of an imperial system based on the Roman model. He believed that a Bourbon restoration would be more difficult if his family's succession was entrenched in the Constitution. Launching yet another referendum, Napoleon was elected as Emperor of the French by a tally exceeding 99%. Napoleon was proclaimed Emperor on 18th of May 1804 by the Senate and was crowned Emperor of the French on 2nd December 1804 at the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Paris in Paris with the crown of Napoleon. Raid on Boulogne-Boulogne-sur-Mer, France elements of the Royal Navy conducted a naval assault on the fortified French port of Boulogne during the Napoleonic Wars. It differed from the conventional tactics of naval assaults of the period by utilizing a wide range of new equipment produced by the American-born inventor Robert Fulton with the backing of the Admiralty. Despite its ambitious aims, the assault produced little material damage to the French fleet anchored in the harbor, but did perhaps contribute to a growing sense of defeatism amongst the French as to their chances of crossing the English Channel in the face of the Royal Navy and launching a successful invasion of the United Kingdom. Spain declares war on Great Britain, Cabo de Santa Maria, Portugal. The Battle of Cape Santa Maria was a naval engagement that took place off the southern Portuguese coast, in which a British squadron under the command of Commodore Graham Moore attacked and defeated a Spanish squadron commanded by Brigadier Don José de Bustamante, Higuera, during peacetime. As a result of this action, Spain declared war on Great Britain on 14 December 1804, Third Coalition England. In December 1804, 
an Anglo-Swedish agreement led to the creation of the Third Coalition. British Prime Minister William Pitt the Younger spent 1804 and 1805 in a flurry of diplomatic activity to form a new coalition against France. Mutual suspicion between the British and the Russians eased in the face of several French political mistakes, and by April 1805 the first two had signed a treaty of alliance. Having been defeated twice in recent memory by France and keen on revenge, Austria also joined the coalition a few months later. The stated goal of the Anglo-Russian alliance was to reduce France to its 1792 borders. Austria, Sweden and Naples would eventually join this alliance, whilst Prussia again remained neutral. Napoleon becomes King of Italy, Milan, Italy. The Kingdom of Italy was born on 17th of March 1805, when the Italian Republic, whose president was Napoleon Bonaparte, became the Kingdom of Italy, with the same man as King of Italy, and the 24-year-old Eugène de Beauharnais, his viceroy. Napoleon I was crowned at the Duomo di Milano, Milan on 23rd of May, with the Iron Crown of Lombardy. His title was Emperor of the French and King of Italy, showing the importance of this Italian kingdom for him. Battle of Diamond Rock, Martinique. A Franco-Spanish force dispatched under Captain Julien Cosmao to retake Diamond Rock at the entrance to the bay leading to Fort de France from the British forces that had occupied it over a year before. The British, short of both water and ammunition, eventually negotiated the surrender of the rock after several days under fire. Villeneuve had retaken the rock, but the day the attack began, the frigate Didon had arrived with orders from Napoleon. Villeneuve was ordered to take his force and attack British possessions, before returning in force to Europe, hopefully having in the meantime been joined by Gantome's fleet. But by now his supplies were so low that he could attempt little more than harassing some of the smaller British islands. Battle of Cape Finisterre, Cape Finisterre, Spain. The British fleet under Admiral Robert Calder fought an indecisive naval battle against the combined Franco-Spanish fleet which was returning from the West Indies. Failing to prevent the joining of French Admiral Pierre de Villeneuve's fleet to the squadron of Farrell and to strike the shattering blow that would have freed Great Britain from the danger of an invasion, Calder was later court-martialed and severely reprimanded for his failure and for avoiding the renewal of the engagement on 23 and 24 July. At the same time, in the aftermath, Villeneuve elected not to continue on to Brest, where his fleet could have joined with other French ships to clear the English Channel for an invasion of Great Britain. Austrian Plans and Preparations, Mantua, Italy General Mack thought that Austrian security relied on sealing off the gaps through the mountainous Black Forest area in southern Germany that had witnessed much fighting during the campaigns of the French Revolutionary Wars. Mack believed that there would be no action in central Germany. Mack decided to make the city of Ulm the centerpiece of his defensive strategy, which called for containment of the French until the Russians under Kutuzov could arrive and alter the odds against Napoleon. Ulm was protected by the heavily fortified Mikkelsburg Heights, giving Mack the impression that the city was virtually impregnable from outside attack. Fatally, the Aulic Council decided to make northern Italy the main theater of operations for the Habsburgs. Archduke Charles was assigned 95,000 troops and directed to cross the Adige River with Mantua, Peschiera, and Milan as the initial objectives. Archduke John was given 23,000 troops and commanded to secure Tyrol while serving as a link between his brother, Charles, and his cousin, Ferdinand. The latter's force of 72,000, which was to invade Bavaria and hold the defensive line at Ulm, was effectively controlled by Mack. The Austrians also detached individual corps to serve with the Swedish in Pomerania and the British in Naples, though these were designed to obfuscate the French and divert their resources. French plans Verona, Italy. At the beginning of August 1805, Napoleon gave up his plan for invading Great Britain across the English Channel. Instead, he decided to move his army from the Channel coast to South Germany to smash the Austrian army, the Aulic Council thought Napoleon would strike in Italy again. Thanks to an elaborate spy network, Napoleon was aware that the Austrians deployed their largest army in Italy. 
The Emperor desired that Archduke Charles's army not be allowed to influence events in southern Germany. Napoleon ordered 210,000 French troops be launched eastwards from the camps of Boulogne and would envelop General Mack's exposed Austrian army if it kept marching towards the Black Forest. Meanwhile, Marshal Murat would conduct cavalry screens across the Black Forest to fool the Austrians into thinking that the French were advancing on a direct west-east axis. He hoped to be at the Austrian capital of Vienna in November before the Russian army appeared on the scene. ULM Campaign Swabia, Germany The French Grande Armée, led by Napoleon Bonaparte, had 210,000 troops organized into seven corps and hoped to knock out the Austrian army in a series of French and Bavarian military maneuvers and battles designed to outflank an Austrian army under General Mack in the Danube before Russian reinforcements could arrive. The Ulm campaign is considered an example of a strategic victory. Though Napoleon indeed had an overwhelming superior force, the campaign was won with no major battle. The Austrians fell into the same trap Napoleon had set at the Battle of Marengo, but unlike Marengo, the trap worked with success. Everything was made to confuse the enemy. Battle of Wertingen Wertingen Germany Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte had launched his 200,000-man Grand Army across the Rhine. This huge mass of maneuver wheeled to the south and crossed the Danube River to the east of, i.e., behind, General Karl Freiherr Mack von Leiberich's concentration at Ulm. Unaware of the force bearing down on him, Mack stayed in place as Napoleon's corps spread south across the Danube, slicing across his lines of communication with Vienna. In the Battle of Wertingen, 8th October 1805, Imperial French forces led by Marshals Joachim Murat and Jean Lannes attacked a small Austrian corps commanded by Feldmarshal Lieutenant Franz Xaver von Offenberg. This action, the first battle of the Ulm campaign, resulted in a clear French victory. The Austrians were decimated, losing nearly their entire force, 1,000 to 2,000 of which were prisoners. Battle of Gunzburg Gunzburg, Germany General of Division Jean-Pierre Fermin Malher's French division attempt to seize a crossing over the Danube River at Gunzburg in the face of a Habsburg Austrian army led by Feldmarshal Lieutenant Karl Mack von Lieberich, Malher's division managed to capture a bridge and hold it against Austrian counterattacks. Battle of Haslach Jungingen Ulm Jungingen. Germany fought at Ulm Jungingen north of Ulm at the Danube between French and Austrian forces. The effects of the Battle of Haslach Jungingen on Napoleon's plans are not fully clear, but the Emperor may have finally ascertained that the majority of the Austrian army was concentrated at Ulm. Battle of Elchingen Elchingen, Germany French forces under Mikkel Ney route an Austrian corps led by Johann Sigismund Riesch. This defeat led to a large part of the Austrian army being invested in the fortress of Ulm by the army of Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte of France, while other formations fled to the east. At this point in the campaign, the Austrian command staff was in full confusion. Ferdinand began to openly oppose Mack's command style and decisions, charging that the latter spent his days writing contradictory orders that left the Austrian army marching back and forth. On 13th October, Mack sent two columns out of Ulm in preparation for a breakout to the north, one under General Reich, headed towards Elchingen, to secure the bridge there, and the other under Werneck went north with most of the heavy artillery. Battle of Ulm, Ulm, Germany. The Battle of Ulm on 1619. October 1805 was a series of skirmishes at the end of the Ulm campaign, which allowed Napoleon Thrissurs to trap an entire Austrian army under the command of Karl Freiherr Mack von Leiberich with minimal losses and to force its surrender near Ulm in the electorate of Bavaria. By 16th of October, Napoleon had surrounded Mack's entire army at Ulm, and three days later, Mack surrendered with 25,000 men, 18 generals, 65 guns, and 40 standards. The victory at Ulm did not end the war since a large Russian army under Kutuzov was still near Vienna. The Russians withdrew to the northeast to await reinforcements and to link up with surviving Austrian units. The French followed and captured Vienna on 12th of November. Battle of Verona-Verona, Italy The French Army of Italy under the command of André Massena 
fought an Austrian army led by Archduke Charles, Duke of Teschen. By the end of the day, Massena seized a bridgehead on the east bank of the Adige River, driving back the defending troops under Joseph Philip Vukasevich. Battle of Trafalgar Cape Trafalgar, Spain. Napoleon's naval plan in 1805 was for the French and Spanish fleets in the Mediterranean and Cadiz to break through the blockade and combine in the West Indies. They would then return, assist the fleet in Brest to emerge from blockade, and in combination clear the English Channel of Royal Navy ships, ensuring a safe passage for the invasion barges. The plan seemed good on paper, but as the war wore on, Napoleon's unfamiliarity with naval strategy and ill-advised naval commanders continued to haunt the French. The Allied fleet, under the command of French Admiral Villeneuve, sailed from the port of Cadiz in the south of Spain on 18th October 1805. They encountered the British fleet under Admiral Lord Nelson, recently assembled to meet this threat in the Atlantic Ocean along the southwest coast of Spain, off Cape Trafalgar. The Battle of Trafalgar was a naval engagement between the British Royal Navy and the combined fleets of the French and Spanish navies during the War of the Third Coalition. Battle of Caldiero Caldiero, Italy news that Emperor Napoleon I demolished the main Austrian army in the Ulm campaign finally reached Massena on 28 October and he issued orders for an immediate offensive against the Austrian army in northern Italy. Crossing the Adige River with the divisions of Duham, Gardin, and Gabriel Jean Joseph Molitor, and leaving behind Jean Mathieu Serra's division to cover Verona, Massena planned to move forward into Austrian controlled territory. Archduke Charles of Austria Teschen, himself acutely aware of the dire consequences of the fall of Ulm, was planning to move towards Vienna in order to reinforce the remains of the Austrian army and link up with the Russians. However, in order to avoid having Massena's men on his heels, he decided to suddenly turn and face the French, hoping that by defeating them, he would ensure the success of his march towards inner Austria. The battle was thus a significant strategical victory for the French because it allowed them to closely follow the Austrian army and to harassing it continually in a number of skirmishes as it fell back towards inner Austria. Massena thus delayed Charles and prevent him from joining the army of the Danube, which would greatly influence the outcome of the war. Historians disagree on whether Caldero was a French tactical victory, an Austrian tactical victory, or a draw. Battle of Cape Ortegal Carino, Spain. The Battle of Cape Ortegal was the final action of the Trafalgar campaign and was fought between a squadron of the Royal Navy and a remnant of the fleet that had been defeated earlier at the Battle of Trafalgar. It took place on 4 November 1805 off Cape Ortegal in northwest Spain and saw Captain Sir Richard Strachan defeat and capture a French squadron under Rear Admiral Pierre du Manoir Le Pelli. It is sometimes referred to as Strachan's action. Battle of Amstetten Amstetten, Austria the Battle of Amstetten was a minor engagement which occurred when the retreating Russo-Austrian troops, led by Mikhail Kutuzov, were intercepted by Marshal Joachim Murat's cavalry and a portion of Marshal Jean Lanz's corps. Pyotr Bagration defended against the advancing French troops and allowed the Russian troops to retreat. This was the first fight in which a major part of the Russian army opposed a significant number of French troops in the open. The total number of Russo-Austrian troops was around 6,700, while the French troops numbered roughly 10,000 troops. The Russo-Austrian forces suffered more casualties but were still able to successfully retreat. Battle of Mariazell Mariazell, Austria Only the corps of Michael von Kienmeier and Franz Jalasic escaped envelopment by the Grande Armee of Napoleon. As Kienmeier's columns fled to the east, they joined with elements of the Russian Empire's army in a rear guard action at the Battle of Amstetten on 5th November. A few days later, Davout's III Corps caught up with Mervelt's division at Mariazell. The Austrian soldiers, their morale shaken by continuous retreating, were routed after a brief struggle. Battle of Durenstein Durenstein, Austria. At Durenstein, a combined force of Russian and Austrian troops trapped a French division commanded by Theodore Maxime Gazan. 
The French division was part of the newly created the Eighth Corps, the so-called Corps Mortier, under command of Edouard Mortier. In pursuing the Austrian retreat from Bavaria, Mortier had overextended his three divisions along the north bank of the Danube. Mikhail Kutuzov, commander of the coalition force, enticed Mortier to send Gazan's division into a trap, and French troops were caught in a valley between two Russian columns. They were rescued by the timely arrival of a second division, under command of Pierre Dupont de l'Etang. The battle extended well into the night, after which both sides claimed victory. The French lost more than a third of their participants, and Gazan's division experienced over 40% losses. The Austrians and Russians also had heavy losses, close to 16%, but perhaps the most significant was the death in action of Johann Heinrich von Schmidt, one of Austria's most capable chiefs of staff. Capitulation of Dornburn, Dornburn, Austria. The Ulm campaign in October 1805 was catastrophic for Austria, with only the corps of Michael von Kienmeier and Franz Jelacic escaping envelopment and capture by the Grand Armée of Napoleon. While Kienmeier's troops withdrew east toward Vienna, the only escape route open to Jelacic was to the south. As some of Napoleon's corps moved south into the Alps, and the Austrian army of Archduke Charles, Duke of Teschen, withdrew from Italy, Jalasic's force was cut off from the rest of Austria. In a remarkable trek, his cavalry set off for Bohemia and evaded capture. However, Augereau's late arriving corps moved into the Vorarlberg and after a number of clashes, trapped Jalasic's infantry at Dornburn. The French VII Corps under Marshal Pierre Augereau faced an Austrian force led by Franz Jalasic isolated near Lake Constance, Bodensee, by superior numbers of French troops, Jalasic surrendered his command. Battle of schongrabern hollebrunn Austria. The Russian army of Kutuzov was retiring north of the Danube before the French army of Napoleon. On 13th November 1805, Marshals Murat and Lannes, commanding the French advance guard, had captured a bridge over the Danube at Vienna by falsely claiming that an armistice had been signed and then rushing the bridge while the guards were distracted. After sustaining several French assaults and holding the position for some six hours, Bagration was driven out and executed a skilled and organized withdrawal to retire northeast to join the main Russian army. His skillful defense in the face of superior forces successfully delayed the French enough for the Russian forces of Kutuzov and Buxhauden to unite at Brno, Brun, on 18th November 1805. Battle of Castelfranco Veneto, Castelfranco Veneto, Italy. After hearing the news of Ulm, the main army of Archduke Charles, Duke of Teschen began withdrawing from northern Italy, and Archduke John of Austria's smaller army pulled out of the county of Tyrol. In the confusion, Rohan's brigade became separated from John's army. First, Rohan attempted to join part of Charles' army, Failing, he had his men move south to link up with the Austrian garrison of Venice. After an epic march, Rohan's brigade was cornered short of Venice. Two divisions of the French Army of Italy confronted an Austrian brigade led by Prince Louis-Victor de Rohan Guimenez. The Austrians had made a remarkable march from deep in the Alps to the plains of northern Italy. But, caught between the divisions of Jean Renier and Laurent Gouvion Saint-Cyr, Rohan surrendered his command after failing to fight his way out. Battle of Austerlitz, Slavkov, Uberna, Czechia. The Battle of Austerlitz was one of the most important and decisive engagements of the Napoleonic Wars. In what is widely regarded as the greatest victory achieved by Napoleon, the Grande Armée of France defeated a larger Russian and Austrian army led by Emperor Alexander I and Holy Roman Emperor Francis II. Austerlitz brought the War of the Third Coalition to a rapid end with the Treaty of Pressburg signed by the Austrians later in the month. Battle of Blauberg, Blueberg Strand, South Africa. At that time, the Cape Colony belonged to the Batavian Republic, a French vassal. Because the sea route around the Cape was important to the British, they decided to seize the colony in order to prevent it and the sea route from also coming under French control. A British fleet was dispatched to the Cape in July 1805 to forestall French troop ships which Napoleon had sent to reinforce the Cape garrison. 
After a British victory, peace was made under the Treaty Tree in Woodstock. It established British rule in South Africa, which was to have many ramifications for the region during the 19th and 20th centuries. Battle of San Domingo Santo Domingo, Dominican Repub squadrons of French and British ships of the line, fought off the southern coast of the French-occupied Spanish colonial captaincy general of Santo Domingo in the Caribbean. All five of the French ships of the line, commanded by Vice Admiral Corentin Urbain Lesegues, were captured or destroyed. The Royal Navy led by Vice Admiral Sir John Thomas Duckworth lost no ships and suffered fewer than a hundred killed, while the French lost approximately 1,500 men. Only a small number of the French squadron were able to escape. Invasion of Naples Naples, Italy. An army of the French Empire led by Marshal André Massena marched from northern Italy into the Kingdom of Naples, an ally of the coalition against France ruled by King Ferdinand IV. The Neapolitan army was vanquished at Campo Tenise and rapidly disintegrated. The invasion was eventually successful despite some setbacks, including the prolonged siege of Gaeta, the British victory at Maida, and a stubborn guerrilla war by the peasantry against the French. Total success eluded the French because Ferdinand withdrew to his domain in Sicily, where he was protected by the Royal Navy and a British army garrison. In 1806, Emperor Napoleon appointed his brother Joseph Bonaparte to rule over southern Italy as king. Siege of Gaeta. Gaeta, the fortress city of Gaeta and its Neapolitan garrison, under Louis of Hesse Philippsthal, was besieged by an imperial French corps led by André Massena. After a prolonged defense in which Hesse was badly wounded, Gaeta surrendered and its garrison was granted generous terms by Massena. Battle of Campo Tenez, Morano Calabro, Italy. Two divisions of the Imperial French Army of Naples, led by Jean Rainier, attacked the left wing of the Royal Neapolitan Army under Roger de Damas. Though the defenders were protected by field fortifications, a French frontal attack combined with a turning movement rapidly overran the position and routed the Neapolitans with heavy losses. Battle of Maida Maida, Calabria. The British expeditionary force fought a French force outside the town of Maida in Calabria, Italy, during the Napoleonic Wars. John Stuart led 5,236 Anglo-Sicilian troops to victory over about 5,400 Franco-Italian-Polish troops under the command of French General Jean Rainier, inflicting significant losses while incurring relatively few casualties. Confederation of the Rhine Frankfurt am Main, Germany. The Confederated States of the Rhine, simply known as the Confederation of the Rhine, also known as Napoleonic Germany, was a confederation of German client states established at the behest of Napoleon some months after he defeated Austria and Russia at the Battle of Austerlitz. Its creation brought about the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire shortly afterward. The Confederation of the Rhine lasted from 1806 to 1813. The founding members of the Confederation were German princes of the Holy Roman Empire. They were later joined by 19 others, altogether ruling a total of over 15 million subjects. This granted a significant strategic advantage to the French Empire on its eastern frontier by providing a buffer between France and the two largest German states, Prussia and Austria, which also controlled substantial non-German lands. Battle of Mileto Mileto, Italy. The Battle of Mileto occurred in Calabria during an attempt by the Bourbon Kingdom of Sicily to reconquer its possessions in continental Italy, known as the Kingdom of Naples. The battle ended in a victory for French forces under General Jean Rainier. Epilogue Slavkov Uberna, Czechia Key Findings The Napoleonic Kingdom of Italy gains Venice, Istria, Dalmatia from Austria, Bavaria gains Tyrol, Württemberg, gains Habsburg territories in Swabia. Napoleon establishes the Kingdom of Holland and the Grand Duchy of Berg. The Holy Roman Empire dissolves. Franz II advocates his title of Holy Roman Emperor. The Confederation of the Rhine forms from German princes of the former Holy Roman Empire.
We offer you deep historical information from history on YouTube channel. Subscribe. Now don't forget to turn on notifications.